Great, if you could just say your name. Yeah, Craig Holdridge from the Nature Institute in Ghent, New York. Great, thanks for uh, doing this interview. Um, sure. So just real quick, what, um, what are some of the unintended effects that can happen um, and what are the concerns about unintended effects with, uh, with biotechnology? Yeah, so unintended effects arise simply because an organism is complex, um, is always in changing contexts, either temporally um, developing or in a, a changing environment or has eating different foods, different kind of behavior, different light conditions if it's a plant. And because in, in, um, all organisms are responsive and adaptive and active, are actually agencies, then any time you insert um, something into an organism, uh, a novel DNA construct, for example, then um, you, uh, based on certain research, you will know, um, well, this in, in, a, in the host organism, it was related to a particular function. The question is, will it be related to that function in, um, in the receiving organism? And that's where the unintended effects come about, because the organism will use that new, that new construct possibly in the way it was planned and possibly not. And what we can't know about unintended effects, of course, is any time you get into um, new circumstances, when a plant begins to grow in a different environment or you get a hot summer, then that um, genetic manipulation might in some way be related to altered lignin content in the, uh, in the stem of the plant, or the plant may be exuding different substances into the soil. So, so what are some of the, the kind of prime examples of this that we've seen in research so far? Yeah, let me take a, a recent example with um, genetically engineered um, aspen trees um, that produce an insecticide that the, um, when, the, when the leaves of those tr um, trees are in streams, then you get a different biological community of aquatic insects feeding, um, living in and feeding on those leaves. That changes. Nobody understands that. Um, so you have those external environmental changes, and then you have internal changes in the organism um, that, that, for example, different kinds of compounds, biological compounds in the leaves are being formed. Again, no one knows why. Um, that may even have to do with reduced um, uh, uh, immunity towards certain insects, you know, so that they, they, they speak about the uh, changing the immunity of the organism through this, um, this, this manipulation that's supposed to be very targeted, um, right? but it is targeted in one sense, but the organism as a context is always a context that decides how the targeted uh, manipulation is used. Right. That we never know beforehand. We cannot know that. We can't know all the possible different conditions. Um, and we can detect certain unintended effects, but we might there might be many effects that we're not even um, detecting that are out there. So you talked a little bit about the sort of mechanistic metaphor, or yeah. the, the the metaphor of a of a of a of a living organism as a machine. Yeah. Um, what are the, what are some of the limitations of that? Yeah, I mean that's those metaphors are very strong in, in synthetic biology. They're already there to a degree in what we call genetic engineering. But in this evolution of genetic engineering, the synthetic biology, the idea that an organism is made of independent parts that one could construct parts into modules and those modules into systems that then determine what an organism does. The the problem with that is just simply not the way organisms function. Any any part like a sequence of DNA can be have multiple functions. It's not that one gene does one thing. That's something we know over the last the research within the past 30 years is every everywhere you go, any substance they find, oh, it has this function. Other research groups will find, oh, it also has this function under this context. In that context, if it's later in the development of the organism, or if the organism is being fed different um, nutrients, or this or that, so that. No, there are no such thing as standard biological parts in real organisms, and yet that's what a, um, a synthetic biologist wants to introduce and, and suggest, oh, we know it will do X or Y in this organism, and they don't know that. 
because the organism is not definable. The organism is not precise the way a machine is precise. So that one's using a reduced, um, narrow view that has its own kind of power, the machine metaphor, the computer metaphor, the electronic circuitry, circuitry, uh, circuitry, boy, that's sorry, you're gonna have to get rid of that part. Uh, um, that, that, it's, that you have these systems that you can exactly and precisely control, and it's simply not the way organisms are uh, made. Organisms are not constructed, they develop. Um, parts are not assembled in organisms, they develop. So we need a more biological description of organisms that com conforms to the reality of organisms in order to really um, have a clear picture of what synthetic biology will not be able to do and the dangers of, you could say, having, I'll put it a little bit negatively now, an arrogant perspective, I know what an organism is and it's going to do the, what I want it to do. Right? And they will have success in certain ways by reducing what an organism can do, reducing the environmental context, making things more simple. That's part of their aim. But then the question is, what are we doing to life? Right? When we're decontextualizing life in order to control it, what's, there are real ethical questions there for me as a biologist. What, what are we doing to the organisms we're manipulating? And then you have the unintended effects on the environment. So, so can you expand on that a little bit? What, what are the ethical implications in your well, view? Well, in one way, I mean, for me, it's the question, do we as human beings, we have to take responsibility for everything we do, whether we like to or not. And can I responsibly manipulate something and based on a very narrow worldview or mentality, or uh, yeah, I'll call it uh, mentality, um, thinking that I know what I'm doing, right? So that's where the arrogance or the hubris comes in. So that for me, the, the ethical question is how much can I manipulate before I understand? And our understanding of biology to this point today is to show that it's much more complex, much more context sensitive, much more um, uh, full-blooded than, than the mechanistic paradigm that has, was kind of dominant in the 20th century show. So that we have all the more reason to be cautious um, on, because we know a lot more and then knowing a lot more also shows our ignorance. And we should not be um, manipulating based on on, um, on the idea that we know what we're doing. And I think that's um, ethic, uh, it's an ethical problem. Right? Great. Thanks so much. Yeah. Sorry about circuitry. Circuitry.